it's time for members' statements. The member from Sarnia Lambton. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. A privilege to uh, rise today. It's my privilege to rise in the legislature and speak briefly today about a unique program in my Sarnia Lambton riding called Face Off for Mental Health that I hope will eventually be adopted by other regions across Ontario. St. Clair Child and Youth Services launched this exciting campaign last year with the aim of raising awareness of mental health through local hockey associations. The goal of the program is to make hockey arenas and dressing rooms a safe place to talk about mental health. Each of the associations hosted a face-off for Mental Health Awareness Weekend, where teams from Might to Midgets taped their sticks green in support of mental health. Information about local me mental health resources were available in arenas, and over 2,600 registered players were provided with a hockey puck featuring the helpline information. Additionally, each association made it mandatory for their bench staff to participate in a mental health education workshop. With the issue of mental health becoming more and more recognized in our province, especially young, pe young people, I commend the St. Clair Child and Youth Services for introducing this great program in Sarnia Lambton. Using the popularity of hockey as a way of bringing youth mental health issues to the forefront, I am very gratified to see the success of Face Off for Mental Health during its first year. I am hoping that next season the program can continue to grow, not only in my riding, but across the province as well. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Very well. I apologize to the member when his desk moved. I looked at it and he went, oh, what, what, what? <laughs> anyway, further member statements, the member from Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm rising today to talk about an issue I've talked about many times in this House, the outrageous compensation of Hydro One CEO Mayo Smith. Over the year ago, I spoke against this ridiculous $4 million salary of Mayo Smith. Since then, he's gotten a raise and has paid $6 million. Mayo Smith told us that he feels the pain of the people struggling with high hydro bills. How can anyone feel the pain when you're raking in $6 million? It's important to note the NDP has long advocated for a cap on public sector CEO salaries. In, in 2013, the NDP brought forward a bill to cap public sector executive board pay at $418,000. The NDP brought forward legislation several times that would have capped public sector CEO salaries. The PC party caucus all voted against it and ultimately defeated the bill. It's incredibly unfortunate that bill did not pass. Yep. Mr. Speaker, 80 per cent of Ontarians do not support the sale of Hydro One. They didn't support the Conservatives either when they started the privatization. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Selling Hydro One is the biggest mistake this government has ever made. Without control of Hydro One, we cannot we cannot tackle the issue of outrageous executive salaries. We need to buy back Hydro One, bring it back into public hands to protect Ontarians who are struggling to pay their Hydro bill. Only the NDP has a plan to do that and protect Ontarians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. For the member's statements, the member from Mississauga Arendelle. Mr. Speaker, on April 14th, many Ontarians practicing the Sikh faith celebrated the historical and religious festival known as Bisakhi. It is a very important celebration of the beginning of a new solar year, the spring harvest, as well as the birth of Khalsa in 1699, when Guru Gobind Singh introduced the five Ks, which included five, five items that Khalsa Sikhs must wear at all times. The five Ks, along with the turban, became the most visible symbol of Sikhism. Bisaki is celebrated in all corners of our province, right here in Toronto, as well as neighboring cities like Mississauga and Brampton. Nagar Keetans, also known as Khalsa Day Parade, will be held. Many volunteers will help to make these events a success, which reminds me of the dedication volunteers all over Ontario exhibit in helping to make this better province to live in. Coincidentally, it was National Volunteer Week last weekend, and I would like to acknowledge everyone who devotes their time to improving, the, improving their communities. In a multicultural society, celebrations such as Nagar Keetans are important in establishing understanding of each other's faith and culture. As such, I'm very pleased that during Sikh Heritage Month in April, so many people came together to celebrate Bisaki and will come together to take part in Nagar Keetan and be witness to a positive impact that the Sikh community has made in our great 
province. Mr. Speaker, uh, I had introduced my staff before who are here to attend the Bisaki function. They are here in the legislature now. I really want to say thanks to them because they have done a tremendous job of serving the residents of Mitsak Arendelle. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Lanark for Athletics at Addington. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I would like to extend my heartfelt congratulations to the Leeds, Grenville and Lanark District Health Unit for being recognized as a best practice spotlight organization by the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario. The RNAO designates healthcare and academic institutions as a best practice spotlight organization when they effectively implement and evaluate RNAO best practice guidelines. The health unit programs are enhancing healthy adolescent development, working with families to promote safe sleep for infants aged 0 to 12 months, integrated smoking cessation into daily nursing practices, interventions for postpartum depression, and persons and family-centered care are the practice guidelines they would focus on during this period. Their hard work has paid off, and now they will be recognized and designated by the RNAO. This is a wonderful recognition for the many staff involved in the project, but also important for all members of the local community who will see a direct impact and improvement in the health care services offered to them. I applaud the health unit's success and wish them the very, very best at their celebration tomorrow evening. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member from Oshawa. This past Friday night, I was out on the road with Durham Region Police officers from the Human Trafficking Division on a ride along that went into the early morning. We spent 12 hours in the tangled and terrifying world of sex trafficking. My soul is still trying to file what I have seen and learned. We can never appreciate our police enough for what they do, and I do not know how they are able to handle what they do. Thank God for these officers and the social workers who are committed to helping our girls who have been taken and are being controlled and sold for sex by the hour after hour after hour until they can escape. I met a survivor who was able to get out after nine years because of a police intervention that offered her a way out with the support she needed. She and a worker from a local women's shelter are working to support other young women when and if we can get to them, working alongside our officers. Speaker, this is a world of fear and control. Girls in high school are being trafficked by their boyfriend pimps in the evenings and weekends and go to school like usual during the day. Parents don't recognize branding tattoos or second phones or boyfriend pimps for the signs that they are. I saw hundreds of ads being placed in the middle of the afternoon to sell girls to predators in normal hotel rooms all along our 401. Men who stop in for half an hour on their way to work in the morning. Men who pay for after-game hotel parties and don't ask where the girls come from. Men who go home to their families. I met a young woman who is still in this hell, where she has survived for 10 years, who trusted us with the story of her nightmare, but she doesn't believe she can get out. To her and the hundreds of other girls in this web, not everyone wants to hurt you. Call the police, let them get you out. And to the neighbours in our communities and guests at our hotels, recognize what you are seeing. Help our girls, help end sex trafficking, call the police or call Crime Stoppers. Further member statements, the member from Ottawa South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And today, uh, Monday, April 23rd, Turkish Canadians celebrate National Sovereignty and Children's Day. In 1920, the New Republic dedicated the day to the world's children in recognition that the next generation will be the successor for the future. The declaration symbolizes that Turkey's youth have been entrusted to protect the sovereignty and independence of their nation. Every year, schools host week-long ceremonies, including performances in fields and large stadiums. And today, children will replace government officials and high-ranking civil servants by working in their offices. Children from all over the world are invited to attend special parliamentary sessions in the Grand National Assembly to discuss issues that concern children across the country and around the globe. Children then pledge their commitment to international peace and friendship. UNICEF has also recognized and declared April 23rd as International Children's Day. This is a truly unique and wonderful tradition that continues to unite us all. And I'd like to say a special thank you to the Turkish Canadian community in Ottawa who hosted their annual gala dinner in honour of Children's Day. And uh, they've raised over $90,000 uh, over the years for the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario in my riding. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. 
Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Thorn Hill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I'm really pleased to rise today and just talk about, I think a lot of our hearts have been thumping ever since we heard about the pilot who landed the plane last week with a window that had blown up. Tammy Jo Schultz was at the controls of the Dallas-bound Flight 1380 from Southwest Airlines when it made an emergency landing in Philadelphia. And the jet had apparently blown out an engine, got hit by shrap shrapnel, and a window got blown out. And she's credited for having nerves of steel and helping to prevent a far worse tragedy. And uh, she took the plane into a rapid descent, and the passengers had to don the oxygen mask. And there's some uh, videos even circulating out there um, of, of somebody who uh, taped it. And I just wanted to mention that uh, the pilot, Schultz, was among the first female fighter pilots in the U.S. military. And I want to thank our military for training so many of our great commercial pilots. Uh, we all you know, have gone on planes, and sometimes we marvel at the experience that we're able to actually fly. And uh, her, um, uh, she's, she's really credited with somebody who really pushed to get into the military academy and be able to learn and to train. And I just wanted to um, thank her on behalf of myself, from my constituents, and I'm sure all the members here as well, and uh, to um, remind everybody to please wear their seatbelts, because unfortunately, the passenger that passed away, um, it, it would have been even worse for her family. She was half out of the airplane, but the seatbelt held her in. So we know that planes can be very bumpy and very dangerous, and emergencies can happen. And to remind everybody, I think, uh, on behalf of all of us here in the legislature, to please wear your seatbelts when you're sitting on an aircraft. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Davenport. Speaker, on Friday, April 20th, I have the distinct pleasure of welcoming Minister Souza to Via North Restaurant in my riding of Davenport to announce that the province has committed to building 256 new long-term care beds that will offer specialized care to aging Portuguese-Canadian communities. The beds will be in a long-term care facility called Magellan Community Care, or Casa Magalhães, named after the Portuguese explorer and navigator, and will be tailored for residents with roots in Portugal, Brazil, Angola, Mozambique, Cabo Verde, and other Portuguese-speaking parts of the world. As a proud Portuguese-Canadian, I know firsthand the Portuguese community forms the lifeblood of the, this neighbourhood. Our Portuguese seniors quite literally built this community from the ground up. Over the last four years as MPP and long before that, I heard fierce advocacy from my community on the pressing need to establish long-term care facilities that cater to Ontarians with Portuguese language roots. Magellan Community Care will allow Portuguese seniors to better access high-quality care and continue to live happy and healthy lives, all while accessing services and programs in Portuguese. As our population ages, creating comforting spaces for our elders is more than simply providing medical treatment. Treatment. Long term care is about engaging elderly individuals on a human level that allows them to connect with the people around them unfettered by language barriers. This announcement is part of the province's commitment to build 5,000 new beds by 2022 and more than 30,000 new beds over the next decade. I am proud to be part of a government that values our elders and is committed Thank to you. establishing environments where Ontarians can all age. Thank, Thank you. you. Member statement, the member from Huron, Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Last month, I was happy to attend the 69th annual Young Canada Pee Wee Hockey Tournament hosted by the Godrich Lions yeah. Club. The tournament has host, been hosted since 1950 and has drawn girls and boys teams from across Ontario. This year, the tournament had 22 teams from Western and Southwestern Ontario. The tournament has a storied history. Countless future hockey stars have participated in the past as well. And it's great to see that in looking ahead to our young hockey players, time has been taken to celebrate the past as well. And this year, the Stratford Wise Men were honoured during the opening ceremony for winning the tournament back in 1969. And there's another fun piece of trivia about the Young Canada Week tournament. I once had an opportunity to meet with Wayne Gretzky, and when I told him the riding I represented was the great riding of Huron Bruce, the moment he realized I represented Godridge, his face actually lit up as he remembered playing in Young Canada Week. And you know, it, I share that story because who knows how many more participants will be the next great one 
going through Godreach, the Lions Club hockey tournament known as Young Canada Week. And so I would like to thank all the parents that make this opportunity possible for their young hockey players and who I am positive had lots of fun. Thank you to the Godrich Lions Club and to the President, David McDonald, and lastly, all the volunteers that make this week happen year in and year out. Thank you very much. He happened to score a lot of goals on that weekend, too. I just wanted you to let you know. The guy from Brantford. President of the Treasury Board on a point of order.